in the midst of the peso crisis and the Asian financial crisis, a serious country. Brazil pioneered conditional cash transfers, investments in human capital, and Brazil has been able, through its strong economy, to raise wages and household income and fuel an impressive expansion of wealth and growth. And this is five minutes already. Okay. So this is um, some figures that just show the decline of poverty and inequality while the economy has been growing. That's all. Um, and there's also been uh, social mobilization. social mobilization. Here we can see that. There is still significant racial inequality in Brazil, but in Brazil's march toward becoming a more inclusive society, um, there was a there have been various steps that all of you know have been taken um, to advance the position of African descendants, including the statue of racial equality, and that's just an image of the celebration floor of Congress. Okay, social insurance was reformed and extended, and this is important. At a moment when around the rest of the world, social welfare regimes were in retrenchment, Brazil expanded its social welfare regime. Did the parametric pension reform, extended health care. So I think this is all very impressive. So what's happened? Because I'm now getting close to my time. But what, but the, so the, what, why do I say the paradox of success? What I want to say here is that part of the story, obviously, is the economic downturn. Part of the story has to do with very serious episodes of corruption. But I think there's something more serious underlying the current conjuncture than the economy and the corruption scandals as important as they are. Why have they blown up to the point where people are calling for military intervention? I think that there were, the president's been weakened by sagging approval ratings. Um, the protests of 2013 showed some weaknesses um, in term, but in terms of what? I would say in terms of government responsiveness. And the paradox of success, yeah, well, yeah. so here, this is a, um, some figures about issue savings. And what we see here is that in the uh, beginning of the 2000s, 2002, the most salient issue Brazilians identified was unemployment. And today, the really serious issues are lack of quality health care and violence and crime, lack of security, uh, drug addiction, drug trafficking, and so on. So these are different problems in 2015 than Brazil is facing even in 2002. And when you, if you have 25 or 50% inflation a month, and you have more than a quarter of the population living in poverty, you have to focus on that first. But once you have solved that, then all the problems inherent in a public health system that does not provide sufficient access to everyone who needs it. All the problems with violence, the lack of security, lack of education, so the lack of ur the provision of urban services, sanitation, housing, transportation, these now become manifest. When parties and politicians em employed cabos de Durantes to mobilize and buy votes to win elections, parties and politicians did not need to concern themselves with being responsive to meeting citizens' needs and implementing policies for which they obtain mandates. But now, with the diminishing, of course not the elimination, but with the diminishing of vote buying, parties do have to find a way to be responsive to the people who hire them. And when more than a quarter of the population living in poverty is struggling with 25 to 50% inflation a month, in Cabo San Nicolás, and mobilizing and buying votes, this is what you get. What you get is the hoba mais fas. Which you get this, these are, this is the Brazilian National Election Study from 2002. And here there are very high levels of responses where people say it's okay if a politician robs as long as he gets something done. But that